Hi there, this is Tom from Fetch Masters Dog Training and host of Positive Gun Dog Training Pro, an online community dedicated to those who are trying to train their hunting dogs without the use of heavily aversive techniques or equipment. Let's get started. In this episode, we're going to cover two things. First, we're going to cover various um, equipment that we use in training a dog to retrieve. Um, and the second thing is, we're going to cover how to build retrieving drive if you have a dog that doesn't have a lot of it. Um, if you're a member of the Positive Gun Dog Training Pro community, you'll see the full video. If you're not a member of that community, you will just see the first part of that video. So we encourage you to come on over to positivegundogtraining.com slash pro and sign up and be a part of the community. Okay, let's get started. Here before me, I have a, a uh, collection of things that I use for training uh, hunting dogs to retrieve. I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons of each one. Um, some of you may not like some of my opinions on these things, yet it's the way I do it, and I hope it's helpful to you. First, I have some pheasant scent. If you're a duck hunter, you might want to get some duck scent and put a little bit of this on all your retrieving items and kind of keep that fresh. Um, it's not necessary to teach a dog to retrieve. However, having that kind of a smell on your items makes it easier later on for your dog to make the leap from retrieving non-birds to retrieving birds. The first item I would like to cover is a stuffed toy. Um, I would, I personally would probably never use this, uh, but if you do use stuffed toys, once your dog is picking it up, I would move on to something else. I would not stick with these. That's kind of what I think of those. The second item I want to cover is balls. Here I have a hard rubber ball and here I have a tennis ball. Um, I am not a big fan of using balls to teach a dog to retrieve for hunting. If it's just a pet dog and that's what you want them to retrieve, who cares? But it's not a great fit for hunting for two reasons. Number one, dogs tend to wallow them around in their mouth. Number two, if the balls are squeaky or soft, dogs tend to start crunching them. And that's not what you want a dog to do with your bird. You want a dog to actually hold a bird solidly and not wallow it around and be chompy with it. Um, and you don't want it crunching on the bird. So if you're gonna use these for your hunting dog, kind of like the toy that I just threw out, um, use them in the very beginning to spur the puppy's interest or the older dog's interest. Once they're doing that, you need to move on. Um, do not stick with these. Uh, as a regular retrieving item for hunting dogs. That's my opinion on it. The next item, which you should definitely move to with a puppy, um, again, this is something I only use temporarily, um, is a soft fabric retrieving bumper. Um, if you're gonna use these, one of the things I recommend is cut this string off. You don't want a dog to start retrieving uh, the bumper by the string and letting the bumper dangle down. A dog is supposed to hold a bird like that. Um, and the string is pretty tempting for some dogs. So uh, as you see on this bumper, I cut the string off. I don't keep those on there. You can still throw the bumper plenty far enough for a little puppy without the string. Um, <clears throat> Now, the reason I use these for puppies is because some puppies have a hard time with a harder bumper. It just doesn't feel very good in their mouth. And so 
they prefer these. So it's fine for a little while, but once that dog is getting pretty uh, enthusiastic about his retrieve, I would move on from fabric bumpers. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that I like to use uh, for some dogs is a plastic bumper. I've got two of them here. You notice this one has a string, cut it off, so it'll be like that. I just tied that string on for illustrative purposes. I don't use them. Um, again, it'll, the dog will wanna retrieve the bumper holding it like this. So the reason there's bumps and, and uh, raised areas on these bumpers is theoretically, it keeps the dog from developing hard mouth or crunching the bumper. Um, the theory is, is that these knobs push on the dog's upper palate and it doesn't feel good so he doesn't crunch. I'm here to tell you that doesn't work. Um, so these are actually really good for a couple of purposes. Number one, they're just good general retrieving for dogs that aren't real chompy and they're good for water usage because they float. Um, so once you get a puppy off of fabric bumpers, you need to move to a plastic bumper. These are very, very good tools. Um, in the upper levels of hunting dog training where we're teaching directional hand signals and blind retrieves, you really need bumpers. Toys and balls will not do it. Um, so get your dog on these plastic bumpers as soon as you can. Now, I'm actually gonna save my personal favorite for last. This is a DT Systems dummy launcher. You put a 22 blank in it. I don't know if you can see that. And then you pull this back and it'll shoot the blank way out there in the field. Do not use this without number one, hearing protection. Eye protection is a good idea too, um, but definitely hearing protection because these things are loud. In fact, I use just this part as a blank gun for uh, gun proofing dogs. It's really loud, especially if you use the uh, red um, the red blanks. There's three levels of blanks for it. I think uh, yellow's the weakest maybe, and then there's green, and then there's red. So red is really loud. So wear your hearing protection. Also, do not take your puppy or your dog who you are not 100% sure is gun proofed and shoot this for them because you will make them gun shy. This is only for use with dogs who are gun proofed. Okay. And it's good, to, it's good to use these to practice marking. So you shoot it way out there, the dog has to watch where it hits and then run to it. But your dog must be gun proofed. Now, this is gonna be a little bit controversial and probably hurt someone's feelings. Here I have a Dokken duck. It's made by, it's called a Dokken um, or Dokken or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and I really don't use this. I used to use them early on but I've come to the conclusion that they really have no real advantages um, as a training tool over a bumper. Um, here's what I mean. With a bumper, a dog must hold it pretty much like this, right? That's how you hold a bird. With a dog, and the dog has several options. Like he could carry it like this, which would be fantastic, or he might carry it by the head, which is not acceptable, or there's usually a string coming off the end and he could hold it by the string, which is not acceptable. So with this, you have multiple ways a dog can do it wrong. With this, there's pretty much one way for a dog to do it, and it's better to train the dog that way. Um, so I don't really use these, and really the biggest reason I can see for using them is if you just already own them. Um, in my opinion, if you're gonna use them, cut off the head, cut off the string at the end and just pretend like it's a bumper because I'm pretty sure dogs don't look at it and go, huh, boy, that sure does look like a duck, right? I, I don't think they care. It's, to them, it's just something to retrieve. Um, so we wanna, I prefer a bumper. Now, <clears throat> if you have a dog, and I wanna talk about two problems uh, with retrieving that you may run into. One is that some dogs are bred with such a very low retrieving drive which we're gonna talk about retrieving drive in part two of this video here in a few minutes. Um, and you can't get them to retrieve any of this stuff. They don't like it, they're not gonna retrieve it, they don't care. Um, when that happens, one of the things that we can do 
is you can go to uh, Bass Pro or Cabela's and order a pheasant wing. And you can just start with that, right? You could toss it. Most dogs will pick this up because it's real feathers and they're kind of, they're turned on by it and they like to grab it. So that's something to use. Don't do that unless um, you can't get the dog to retrieve any other way after substantial practice. Because what I found is once you get a dog retrieving these, this becomes so valuable that you no longer can get them to retrieve these very well. Um, and this is what we actually need them to retrieve, not wings. Um, another thing people will do, and this could help uh, if, if the dog won't retrieve anything else, is once you get them retrieving the wing, you could tape or tie the wing to a bumper and use that for retrieving. And that works out okay sometimes. Um, so that's something you might try. But if you do that, you're probably going to have a hard time getting them just to retrieve bumpers. Okay, so now we're moving to one of my personal favorites. This bad boy. This is a piece of approximately an inch and three quarter hard PVC pipe. And I've taken it, and I, I take a layer of duct tape and wrap around it. So that's all it is, is a piece of plastic pipe with duct tape. The benefit, there's a couple of benefits to these. Number one, you can control the weight of them. You can get end caps for them at your local Home Depot, put end caps on them. You can fill it up with sand, cap it in. You can make it as heavy as you want, as light as you want. When you put end caps on it, it'll float. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of flexibility. You can get small pieces of PVC, big pieces, you know, a piece of PVC as big around as a goose, whatever you want. Um, very flexible, and if you're gonna start a collection of retrieving items, everything from here over, including this, I would probably get rid of as soon as possible and use something like this. You can use plastic bumpers, but in my opinion, I just like these better. Um, the other benefit is this, um, when you're dealing with really high energy dogs, a lot of times they can be kind of chompy on a bumper. Now, forced fetching a dog, which we don't do, will usually cure the chompiness because the dog doesn't really enjoy having the bumper in his mouth, you know, as much as a non-forced fetch dog. I'm not saying the dog doesn't like to retrieve or anything crazy like that. I'm just saying force fetching will cure chompiness. What I like to use is this. Um, what I find is when you take a dog that's chompy and you give him this, they love, if the dog loves retrieving, he'll retrieve it all day long, but he won't chomp on it because it doesn't feel good to chomp on, right? It's hard, it's not soft, it's not squishy. So this is a good first step in stopping chompiness. So I highly recommend this. Now, one final thing I wanna put in there. Some of you may be asking, what about birds, um, frozen birds or live birds? Um, we're going to be talking later in another video about how to correctly introduce your dog to birds. But in the mean, in, I would introduce my dog to birds, but I would not be practicing retrieving with frozen or live birds. And here's why. If you have a dog that has not been introduced to birds um, and doesn't really know how to retrieve yet, and you toss a bird, frozen or live, that dog could have a conflict in his mind. He, if, if the dog has retrieving drive, he might be trying to figure out, is this something to retrieve or is this a food source? So I recommend waiting on using birds for retrieving drills until the dog knows how to retrieve. When you say fetch and that dog goes, okay, I know what fetch is. I run straight out, I get the, the bumper, I bring it back to you, I sit, give you the bumper. Once the dog understands that and you put a bird out there and you say fetch, it's not a big leap for a dog to figure out that that bird is for retrieving and not a food source. So um, definitely recommend not using birds for retrieving, frozen or otherwise, until your dog is starting to really figure out what fetching is all about. Okay, now we're going to move over to part two of this, uh, this particular video. We're going to talk about um, a dog's retrieving drive, and we are going to talk about the importance of it, how to develop it, that sort of thing. Um, if you have a dog that has low retrieving drive, you definitely want to see this next part of the video. Um, if you're a member of the Positive Gun Dog Training Pro community, it's gonna, you're going to see it here in just a second. If you're not, um, go to positivegundogtraining.com slash pro, sign up for the community, and you'll be able to go into the online community uh, and watch the rest of the video there.